Hey, so what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and right now I might sound a little bit different because I'm actually using my onboard camera mic to record this, so that's why I'm also talking a little bit softer just because the camera mic on here isn't really the best, but I want to show you all this little modification right here. So I just kind of did a quick and hopefully not too dirty job, uh, but I've never opened up a Super Nintendo before, so I opened one up for the first time, and this is not a typical Super Nintendo as you all can see. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with uh, this guy right here, you know, the original, the blocky Super Nintendo, unless you're over in Europe or Japan, of course, but this is if you're in the US. Uh, well, this is my other Super Nintendo, but I just picked this one up a few months ago. Uh, now, I did a video about it in a video pickup video that I made, and I paid $20 for this. It was working, and it had the cables and the system, and I think two controllers with it. So, uh, this is actually a Super Nintendo Junior or a SNES Mini, Super Nintendo Mini, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm going to explain a little a few things in here but if I remember there should be somewhere on the video or in the description or in the comments or some just like a timestamp where if you just want to see this thing in action uh, you can click that but if you want to you know listen a little bit thank you very much and uh, I'll go ahead and talk about this here. So what the hell did I do to modify it? Well if you look over here on the side because this whole thing's cracked open, of course. Uh, there are three wires that are running from this chip and they're running under the board. Now, this is not a mod chip or anything like that. A lot of people are probably familiar with, you know, glitch chips, mod chips to, you know, run homebrew, uh, play backup games, anything like that. This is actually to increase video quality on here, and this actually unlocks uh, RGB. Uh, RGB SCART capabilities on here because on this system, at least to my knowledge, it does use uh, composite cables, and I don't know if it uses S-Video. They did take out, as you can see, they only have two outputs right here. They have power and they have the Nintendo AV. Uh, so maybe if you have an AV that goes there and goes to, uh, not coaxial, but what is that other thing, you know, just the, the worst format that you could get. I don't remember what it is right now. I just threw out a cable today, but it plugs into, you know, your coaxial connection on your TV. Uh, you might be able to do that. Uh, RF, that's what it's called. RF, man, I, you know, it's a good thing I forgot that, honestly, because RF was completely horrible. Uh, but I don't know if this does RF, and I don't think it does S-Video. So I think the highest it does is composite, which if you're playing on an old TV, is, you know, probably fine, but the problem is composite does not clean up very well on newer TVs. And I myself, I don't have an old tube TV anymore. I haven't had one for quite a few years, and I don't even think anyone in my direct family does anymore. So uh, that is why I modded in RGB. Now, what exactly is RGB SCART? Well, with composite, most Americans are used to, you know, the yellow, white, and red cables. Uh, this is SCART right here. This is how it actually looks like, and I'm sure many Americans have never seen a plug like this before. But many Europeans are probably also laughing at us at the same time. Yeah, this was a standard in Europe, and it really... To be honest, it completely dominates uh, comp composite in every single fashion, it really does. I think just people have said that the plugs aren't really the most reliable as they do break over time, uh, but SCART is much better. And there's different levels of SCART, you know, there's C-Sync, there's uh, True, you know, there's Composite SCART or True SCART, anything like that. I just got some kind of cheap SCART cables, but I mean, they look much better. So even the video quality I'll show you is probably not going to be the best that you can pull out of here. So why did I mod this Super Nintendo right here? Well. I modded it because I wanted to put uh, RGB back into it. Now, the original Super Nintendo I showed you, that actually has RGB output. And some people might be confused with that, but yes, even though it is an American system and we didn't have SCART here, it has. The original one has RGB output. This right here is the Super Nintendo Junior or the Mini or whatever you want to call it. Let me find the official name. Um, Super NES control. It doesn't even say the official name on here. It honestly doesn't. Uh, but some people, you know, they might be questioning this right here. This was a cheaper, slimmed down model of the Super Nintendo that was out in the 90s. I mean, you could even see, I don't know where exactly it said it, but it says right here, copyright 1997. So this is quite an old model or quite a newer model compared to, you know, other models of the Super Nintendo, especially since the Super Nintendo did come out in the early 90s. This came out in the late 90s right here. And a few things that they did was they, you know, axed many other of the outputs there. They disabled SCART, so that's not available, RGB, whatever you want to call it. And uh, get this, if this system is on or off, you can't tell the difference because it's not plugged in, obviously, but they don't have, they took out the LED. 
Yeah, they were so cheap they took they took out the power LED. So the only way you'd know if it is on and working is if you have a game in there, you cleaned up properly, and you turn it on, you hook it up to a TV. Aside from that, you can't just quickly power it on. So that's actually another modification I want to do at a later point. Uh, I do want to install a LED in here just, you know, as a power light indicator, but that's something I'll do at another point here in time. So this modification right here is actually extremely simple. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over again. But really all you need are, I don't know the exact resistors, but, or it says right here, so 75 ohm resistor. So you just need these resistors right here, which these are stupid cheap. Like this mod was quite easy to do. Now I'm gonna say, caution, caution, I'm gonna say, just because I'm saying the mod is easy, doesn't mean you should say, oh, I've never ever soldered before, I'm gonna do this mod. I don't recommend that at all. I'm saying compared to many other modifications I've done on you know, the Xbox 360, uh, other LED different types of mods, other consoles as well, because I actually soldered a uh, RGB board into an N64 to get RGB out of that this summer. And that was probably one of the hardest projects I had to do with soldering because it was just so intricate and minute and everything. But this was extremely easy. These right here, I was able to buy on eBay for what, like 20 for $2, less than $2. So I used four of these because one of them I didn't cut properly and three of them are in the system right here. But really all you need to do is solder three Kynar wire cables. I used Kynar wire, but just solder three wires to this chip right here, the output chip and then solder three uh, resistors to the bottom of the board and then have them meet up somewhere. So it's quite simple to do and it's a really easy modification and it really does nothing but increase the value on your system and uh, creates better output. Now granted, because you do this modification, that's not gonna make composite look better. Composite will still look the same. This is just going to add RGB capability to it and it's extremely simple to do compared to you know, other types of modifications. So I'll actually take out the board right here and show you all the modification. So right here, as you can see, you have you know your three points right here that I had to solder to. Didn't do the best job on there, but those are also really tight to get to. Then I'm gonna have to you know clean up the cables, of course, and everything. But you solder, you find your green, your red, and your blue points on the chip itself and the chip even says sRGB, which is funny because natively, it doesn't output RGB until you modify it, but uh, you just solder those points right there and we'll go ahead and flip it over. And on the back right here, guess what's right there? Yeah, that is the video output. So I guess the best way to explain it is you're taking the RGB signal on the front of the chip right there uh, from the video, you know, com not compressor, but I want to say the processing chip. I guess that's the best way of explaining it in basic terms. It just processes your video quality and everything, and you are just linking that, enabling uh, RGB and linking it back directly to the video output right here. So really, you're just you know, dotting some I's and crossing some T's, so to speak. Uh, but what you do is you find the three points right there, you have the resistors, you solder each resistor there, and you solder the wires to each resistor uh, so they match up with uh, green, red, and blue. And that's really all you do, it's extremely simple. So honestly, I'll say this, for $22 overall, I bought the system with two controllers and cables working. Uh, I put, you know, the parts into it, I paid, spent $2 on the parts, so $22 in total, and then just did this modification right here. And not only, the funny thing is, even though the original Super Nintendo does put out RGB, guess what? This is technically better. Because, and I've seen it as well too, but if you modify RGB output back into a Super Nintendo Junior and you compare it to RGB output just straight up on a regular Super Nintendo, this actually produces better video quality. So if people want a RGB modded uh, Super Nintendo, well, they don't even have to mod the original ones, but they try and gun after this one right here or a pre model one or modify it themselves. So if you modify it yourself, it's extremely simple to do if you know how to solder. And if you don't, many people do buy these pre modified. So what we're going to do right here is we're just going to go ahead and throw this back into the shell and then uh, hook it up and I'll show you this thing working. So with that I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it with Mario Paint which uh, you know it actually would be a really good demonstration but I can't even show that to you because of Nintendo's copyright ID stuff so or content ID so uh, I guess this complete box copy of Super Castlevania 4 will have to suffice. Uh, let's go ahead and crack this open. Alright so here we are to the uh, crappy hopefully not too shaky camera footage right here but what I'm gonna do is I have everything hooked up as you can see this is gonna be stupid right I'm gonna turn I swear I'm turning this on how do you know it's on oh yeah you have to actually come up here and check this out as you can see I have it running through this converter right here 
And there we go. So this is not going to be the best demonstration, of course. So what I'm going to do right here is right now I'm just proving to you that this works through SCART. Uh, and it looks quite good. It looks excellent. But I'm also at the same time recording this footage right now. So I'm actually going to probably go ahead and just splice this in while I'm talking so you all can see the direct output that I am getting right here. So again, this is just Super Castlevania 4 just running on the original Super Nintendo hardware and it looks great. Now one thing with the Super Nintendo has been I've seen it like the original Super Nintendo. I've seen RGB footage from that and I was not really impressed with it and at the same time also you have to be the cables are really finicky is what I'm trying to say, uh, so you'll probably have issues here and there with it unfortunately, but with this it looks excellent. I'm not having any issues with the cable itself and I think it looks great. Um, now I want to say this, a lot of people might think, oh all of a sudden this is HD. No, it's not. Uh, there's no way you can pull True HD out of these systems in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because it pretty much modernizes the system while keeping intact the original hardware. Because I could use an emulator, but emulators aren't going to be perfect all the time. And also sometimes it just... Just going back to that original system, man, is just so much better. Uh, so that's why, you know, I'll do this on these old systems as well. Plus, if I ever do decide to sell them off, it increases the value because all I did was just add more capabilities and better capabilities to the system to improve it. So that's why I end up doing this as well, not only for fun, but, you know, also for value if I do ever sell these off. Now, honestly, I really don't have any complaints about this. Like, I'm looking at this at my 42-inch TV. It looks incredibly clean. Uh, as I said, you know, if you try and hook up a a system through a composite on a modern TV, it doesn't look good. So what this does is because of the converter box and everything, which I'll show you all down here, we got SCART going in, HDMI coming out right there through this little HD converter. Uh, this makes it look immensely better and you are pulling the highest quality you can get out and just upscaling it to HD. So there is a little bit of a delay. I want to say nothing noticeable though. And then this box itself is a little bit pricey and you also got to buy the SCART cables. But if you want it on the original hardware like this, it's it's great. I absolutely love it. Now one reason why I'm also actually recording this in my old apartment as some people might notice is because those resistors, you saw they're really small. I knew I was going to lose them if I moved and I didn't do this modification. So this modification was just to say, okay, in case I lose those resistors, I don't have to spend another two bucks and I've already had this modified. So uh, more of a convenience factor with that. But no, aside from that, you know, I'm looking at it and it's performing well. It looks great. The mods have been stable. There hasn't been any other issues, anything like that. So, I mean, without further ado, we can go ahead and recompile the system and put it all back together, which is really just screwing everything back in. Now, I just want to explain this real quick before I put everything back together. For anyone wondering how I tucked away these cables, this is the shielding that is on there that I've already screwed back but I just made sure all the cables were flat right there. I put in all the screws to make sure that none were going into the cables or interrupting anything. And as you can see, it just goes straight under the shielding and it goes into that hole right there. As for the back side right here, all I did was just make sure the cables were together. I taped them up at a few points right here. And you really don't need to cover these points. Honestly, you can if you want to, but from what I've seen, you don't need to. And that is it. So all the cables, they are making their good connections. They're all together. They're not gonna be wiggling around. So let's go ahead and put this whole thing back together. All right. So as you can see, the thing is put back together. This might look a little bit more familiar to anybody's childhood or collectors or anything like that that weren't really 100% sure about this. But this is the console right here. As you can see, cosmetically, well, it is, you know, yellowed and everything. I don't have time to clean it right now. I'm going to clean it, you know, at one point in the future as well as probably do an LED mod and everything on it. And hopefully I'll record that when I do that. But as you can see, there's absolutely no difference in the ways it cosmetically looks. So if somebody just found this in my house, they would think it's just a normal system. But this is different to the N64 that I modified, which as I said, this was extremely easy. This right here is a N64 that I also did an RGB mod to. And this is the NS2 model, which means the NS1 model is almost as easy to mod, if not easier, than that Super Nintendo that I just modded. Since it's the NS2 model, I had to buy a board from Australia. I had to pay a lot more. But if you flip it around the back right here, if you were able to see, which hopefully I could show you, there is a blue wire right there. 
And then on the side, if you're able to look at that, there are also quite a few red Kynar wires right there. That's all my wiring. So that's how you're able to tell the difference on here if you're not opening up the system. So this is the one I modified, and uh, it's a great party system. I'll say that. People have loved it at parties. But yeah, so again, this is the uh, super yellowed, all RGB modded su Super Nintendo Junior or Mini, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. Pretty easy mod to do. If you've done similar type of repairs and modifications and all that, this is extremely easy. You shouldn't really have many issues with that as long as you have a steady hand and you have some time. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video.